Uh, so welcome, Deb and Jennifer. Thank you again uh, for coming on the show today. And maybe we'll just start a little bit, Deb, with you on, uh, you know, a little bit of your background and, and um, how you got in the field and your career and all that good stuff. Okay. Well, Debbie Briggs. And um, I've been with the Open Door for 24 years now. And prior to that, I did um, probation for 10 years in Michigan City. So um, Jean Ann and I go back. We call us long timers, right? Not old timers. Um, right. We've been, I've been very committed to the city of Michigan City primarily in my social work endeavors. I received my bachelor's and master's degree in social work and um, have also worked for Doonbrook as a parents' as teachers in the a few years back. And then currently I'm on the Healthy Communities um, Board that I assist with that um, every quarter. I've been on that for quite a few years too. So um, that's pretty much my background in social work. Well, that's great, Deb. Oh, gosh, you've been at the high school a long time. That is wonderful. Consistency for kids is huge. Yeah. Bravo is. to you, Deb. And Jennifer, you. you want to tell us a little bit about you and your background? And Sure. Yes. Um, I, uh, just like Debbie, I've been, um, I've gotten my um, bachelor's and my uh, master's in social work, and I've been working with Open Door since... Um, the Open Door Adolescent Health Center since uh, we were at the Alternative High School, uh, which is where the new police building is now. So way back then, uh, I think maybe 98 or 99. Uh -huh. And um, at that time, I came on board working with Brenda Henry, who was a nurse. She wrote a grant for um, helping uh, uh, do some group work on preventing teen pregnancy. And uh, and then from there, I just continued to um, expand and um, as, and uh, I left to raise my three young children. Now that they're in uh, upper elementary school and middle school, I came back to work um, after about ten years being um, gone. So last year I came back and yeah, it's been a wild ride since I got back. Wow, <laughs> everything's changed. <laughs> You would have guessed, right, Jennifer? Guessed, right. Yeah. I thought I was getting out of the house, and here I am back in the house. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for that, and what an interesting background. And, of course, being a parent yourself, you know all the, the ups and downs and sure. all the challenges of being a parent. Uh, so, Deb, maybe if you could, for our audience, tell them about uh, the Open Door Adolescent Health Clinic and just what's the history and what do they do for parents sure. who may not understand the depth of what you do? Sure. Um, the Open Door Adolescent Health started back in 1997 at the Alternative High School. And um, we were under the auspice of that time at the of the Open Door Health Center, which was um, before HealthLink. And they, it was a volunteer doc program that um, was provided in the community. So in 97, when we started the Adolescent Health Center, um, basically, it was to meet the needs of the students, um, health and mental health, comprehensive. And so we started off at the alternative school. And then after the alternative school closed um, for, I think it was about a year or two, we ended up in a, in a junior high, a middle school um, for a while. And then we got out to the high school, which was really where we needed to be. And so we've been there um, since that time. And basically our program is all grant funded. So we provide health and mental health services. We have a nurse practitioner on staff. And so we have, just like a doctor's office, um, she has appointments. So anything that you can be seen for your doctors, you can be seen with our nurse practitioner. Um, in the morning, usually first thing we do walk-ins from seven to 7.30. Um, so those kids who aren't feeling well or have issues, and then the rest of the day it's by, by appointment. Typically we can get you in the same day or the next day. So that's been real convenient. And I think there are a lot of students out there that sometimes just don't make it to their doctor. So this really gives them an opportunity to make a relationship with a medical professional and you know answer get questions answered that they have. Sometimes I think they're just um, a little bit intimidated by by going to the doctor or making an appointment or thinking you know their parent is in the room with them. So. Um, a lot of the students that have the relationship with our family nurse practitioner have become very close and it's become um, a great relationship. So it's not only health that they'll bring their issues to her, but if they're having mental health issues, if they're, 
you know, they'll come in sometimes with a stomach ache and she gets them back in the office and we find out eh, it's really not a stomach ache. It's um, stress maybe from the night before, maybe some suicidal ideation. So um, I think that's the great thing about the open door that it's both the health and the mental health, which makes it really nice for our students. And because it is grant funded, um, the students aren't paying anything for the services. And again, we've free free services. Free. And it's just a matter of parents getting their child signed up. A lot of times pre-COVID, um, you know, they had to come in or we would have um, opportunities like freshman orientation where parents could sign up or any, you know, anytime yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. But we've made it now so that they can do it online. And actually almost all of our forms now are online so that if we oh, great. do yeah, if we are virtual or if we're hybrid, that we have the ability to go back and forth between providing in-person services versus, versus telehealth services. Oh. And then, yeah, so on the same token, then our social workers are also available for our students the same way. Um, and for Jennifer, it's actually worked out, for us, it's worked out good because she's been able to work from home and in the evenings, she's been able to reach a lot more students than she could possibly during the day with um, how, you know, with their virtual learning, because with virtual learning, we don't want to pull them out of that um, during the day. So that's been really helpful. Um, mm -hmm. So there, even though there's a lot of negatives with what happened with COVID, I think we've seen some positive things too, in, in terms of trying to be more creative in how we provide our services to students. Um, so that's something next week, we uh, are hoping to go back hybrid for the next few weeks and hopefully the numbers will stay down. So that's, you know, there still will be students that will remain online, which we can continue to provide services. And then the students are in the building that we have the ability to see them if necessary. So it's kind of the best of both worlds in my opinion. Um, the mission of Open Door is that we wanna keep kids healthy. We want them to stay in school. Um, so obviously this year more than ever, I think mental health has become more of an issue for a lot of our students. Mm -hmm. um, we do our risk screenings online every year with our students, just checking to see how they're feeling. And it's really kind of overwhelming to see how many of them are feeling anxious. Um, yeah. They have anxiety, they're depressed, they're, I mean, the list goes on and on. We have about 20 to 30 things to pick from. And it's really sad when we get those risk screenings back and some kids are just feeling totally overwhelmed and right. um, they don't really have any resources. A lot of the students um, you know, just don't have those additional resources at home. So by providing the risk screening and reaching out to students that are clients of ours, we've been able to um, connect those students with our social workers and so that they have that extra support um, during the school year. So again, I think it's, it's provided challenges for us, but on the same time, um, it's it's we really know how much we're needed now, yeah. now yeah. than ever. So that that's been a great thing. So in order to get registered for our services now, like I said, it can you can do it online. The Michigan City Area website has a, a link. So if parents and it has to be a legal guardian, a parent, it can't be a step parent or a grandparent that doesn't have legal custody because we are providing health and mental health services. It needs to be a legal guardian. So right. can I ask De Deb along those lines, along the lines of confidentiality, let's say a student wants to see you and they don't want their parents to know that they're seeing you. What happens in that situation? Well, when parents sign up, I mean, they can check in terms of, you know, we give results of information. So for instance, if they're being seen by the family nurse practitioner and um, they do a strep test and it's positive. So we're going to notify the parents of that. In terms of social work stuff, um, unless it's an endangerment issue to the, you know, if the child is um, suicidal or something homicidal where they, you know, we need to report that back. Typically, in order to keep those relationships good with the students that we try to protect their privacy as much as possible. So, um, and our, really, to be honest with you, when our students are seeing the nurse practitioner, pretty much when she's done with them, she's calling the parent anyway and saying, hey, this is, you know, what she found medically, and this is maybe the prescription they need. And um, maybe the, letting them know what the follow-up is. So, you know, it's a it's a delicate balance because yeah. we, you know, we understand they are minors, but on the same hand, um, you know, if we went back and told everything they said to us, right. to their parents, they're not going to ever come back to us. Sure. So, and Jennifer maybe can talk about a little bit of that later, but I think it's just really important that, um, 
that they feel safe with us and yeah. that we follow the, the guidelines the best, the best we can. Yeah. Oh, that's great, Deb. Gosh, what a great service. Yeah. And as far as them getting registered, like I said, it's all yeah. online. So it's okay. very easy for parents to, um, to get their student registered. Once they register them, mm -hmm. it's good for school life. So if they register them as a freshman, it's oh, good great. through their senior year. Um, and again, it's, you know, we, we do things like school sports physicals and not like kids and most kids need those once a year. Um, you know, wellness exams, we do um, exams for the ROTC, for the nursing students and the CNA program, um, and then just regular well visits. And, you know, with COVID, we were taking all those precautions in our, in our clinic and, um, you know, just doing, doing the best we can. Oh, gosh, wonderful, Deb. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Deb. That was a great description. And I guess if any parent or student listening, they could just email you or call the clinic and get their questions answered. Yep. Or going online with the Michigan City or web, Michigan City High School page and okay. see it there. Yep. Great. Thanks, Deb. So Jennifer, along those lines, so it, as Deb said, we've got the physical and the mental issues. Um, just students, I guess maybe whatever you want to talk about, but what are the top issues with high school students these days, whether it be relationship or just any issues? Well, I think um, if I if I really think about um, each of the students that I work with, I think it usually does come down to relationship issues of some sort. And, um, you know, teenagers' brains are still developing um, during high school. Um, during you know normal times, they uh, they have to work harder at regulating emotions and um, sort of growing into um, adult life, you know, with more responsibilities and um, expectations on them. And now it's particularly challenging because uh, teens are they were gaining more independence, and now during um, when things are sort of locked down. Um, they're sort of regressing where they uh, don't have the freedoms that they used to have and they're stuck in close quarters with parents and siblings and um, at a time in their developmental stage when they really need to be with their peers and that's really important to them and they need privacy at this age too. So for families to find a balance um, with teenagers in the house, uh, it can be a real challenge. And I think that uh, between parents and their teen children, I see two extremes sometimes. Um, and we need to be somewhere in the middle, but one extreme would be that um, parents feel that once their child is in high school, they really don't need a parent anymore. And then on the other extreme, they have the parent that because we're all home together right now during this time, they're micromanaging or, you know, sort of um, trying very hard to, you know, fix everything for the, for the teen. Um, I heard a funny story about one mom who tried to throw a, uh, a Zoom prom for their <laughs> child and it kind of backfired and didn't turn out so well. So it's important for uh, parents for us to know that even though we want to, you know, make everything better, there's some things we just can't fix right now. And I think um, to, to kind of bring it back to moderation where um, we recognize that uh, our teen sons and daughters need us we are just as important to them as, as we always have been, but they need us in a different way. And right now, I think it's important to um, give support by um, active listening, like really mm -hmm. spending some time open-ended and not filling it with your own questions, but just spending time together and let it let come out what is on their mind. And it might be kind of hard to draw them out, but I think teens really do welcome the invitation that their company is, you know, welcome anytime, but you're not gonna pull them out of their room when they're FaceTiming with friends, but, you know, just to continue to reach out. And, um, and definitely um, recognize that they're feeling stress and grieving the loss of 
some milestones maybe that they didn't get to check off um, some events or whatever. And that, um, you know, teenagers show grief and depression and anger a little different than we do. They might withdraw. Um, a lot of um, students that I'm working with actually um, recognize that they're spending a lot of time in their bedroom, a lot of time sleeping, and they're finding it difficult to get motivated to get out of bed, mm -hmm. move to another room and do their work online. Hopefully um, we'll be having uh, school in person again yeah. um, as planned, but it's it's been a real, real challenge. So I do think it comes down to, um, you know, relationships all around and parents are stressed right now too. So it's, it's, yeah. um, it's yeah. challenging for everybody. I think we all need to um, sort of give each other a break and, um, yeah. you know, maybe some little cracks here and there we can overlook and not, uh, <laughs> not expand them even further. <laughs> right. right, gosh. Great advice, Jenna. I mean, honestly. So anything else you want to add there or quite yet? I have a couple of questions, but sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, to summarize some of the main ideas, you know, you said, you know, in our expect issues, you know, yeah, we can't make them happy or fix their worlds. Right. And those issues can be physical, they can be emotional. Um, but I love what you said and this is hard for us parents, is to try, don't throw our thoughts on them, but ask them, you know, how can we make the everyday better at home? Whether right. it's where we have dinner or do we have dinner or, you know, after school work, what, what's, what's working during the day, what's not working for you? Right. Um, yeah, that's right. I think that before um, the pandemic, we were wondering, are we spending enough time together as a family, right? Yeah. Like carve out time for quality. Yeah, <laughs> now we're like, now, yeah. yeah, now it's really intense. But I, I would um, just throw out there that it might be possible that we are sharing a lot of um, distracted time together, but we're not sharing focus time together. Um, you know, working from home that we're, we're constantly working. And so yeah. maybe we're, you know, all rooming together in the same house, but do we have designated meal times together or is everyone on different schedules? Are teens taking their dinner into their room um, and we only see each other in passing? Yeah. So I think it's important not to confuse just time where we're kind of cooped up together. Right for time where we actually are getting to know each other again or or actually um, getting a chance to recognize where our team right. is at right now because they're constantly changing. Right. And we need to carve out space where we actually turn our phones off, parents turn our phones off and really, um, you know, pay attention, be, uh, be present so that when something does come up when when the when the teenager offers uh, a, a topic to talk about or you know says something in passing you can catch it right then and be there for that present moment um, that yeah. opportunity might pass by otherwise and might yeah. not come back right so interesting Jennifer the difference between physically being cooped up together and you're like oh you know, Deb talked about going into the office. I know when I go into the office at Doombrook, I'm like so excited to drive, get on the road, like, oh my gosh, instead of being at home. Very different than time with your family where you're maybe doing something fun, whether it's a walk or going to the store or maybe doing some safe social distance, some, some outside of the house together. Very different than we're all working in our pods at home. Right. I, yeah. So interesting. I, I think that can be very isolating too. We've had a lot of isol. Even though we're together, it can be very isolating. And I think Jen, you make a really good point, because I think look for those cues when it is good time to talk to your kids. And I, yeah. like she said, you don't want to. You know when it's not because you're going to interrupt them or something. But you know yeah. when you're on those car rides or you, you know it's it's really important in my opinion when you're talking to teenagers that you find the right time because if mm -hmm. it's not the right time. 
yeah. forget it. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. we can all relate. Yeah, and and if I ask one too many questions, my <laughs> oldest son completely shuts down. Right. One time he actually told me, "Mom, you can ask three questions." <laughs> And no follow-up questions. So I think I got, I had to take the hit there that I yeah. was being a bit like an interrogator instead of just being open to what he has to offer. And that might just be time together. He might not right. want to share with me what's going on in, you know, with, with his friends or whatever it might sure. be. But our time together is still important, yeah. even if they say they don't want to talk to yeah. us. Right. And I, and I think that support, like even asking, you know, a student, one of the questions on our risk screening is, do you feel supported at home? Yes, no, somewhat. And a lot of them put no or somewhat. And I think maybe that's an opportunity for parents to say, you know, because so many kids are struggling with the online schooling, you know, to take that time to <clears throat> ask them, well, what is, you know, what could I do or how could I help, you know, to make, to make things better for you. And it can right. be something as simple as, you know, um, you know, I yeah. don't know, something as simple as, well, they maybe need this or they need additional help or a tutor when it comes to math or, but I think if you don't ask a lot of parents, like Jen said, or one extreme or the other, where they're not checking RDS, which is the grading system, you know, to see if their child is behind in assignments, to see if the teacher has been emailing them. So, you know, it's, it is a hard balance when they're in high school, because I think you want to try to get them to tr transition to adulthood eventually. Sure. You don't want to micromanage them, but on the right. same hand, you're their parent and you need to know if they have 29 assignments missing. So, yeah. um, and then, you know, that's when the teachers, I think, get frustrated. So I think communication is important that, you know, you, that if your child is struggling by just looking at the RDS system, you, you'll know, you'll know because you'll see their grades, you'll see what's missing and, um, you know, right. it gives you an opportunity to ask them how you can help. Right without interfering with their freedom, so to speak, but to look at that RDS and know exactly what's going on. I mean, right, Jennifer, be the parent. You know, right. kids will tell you they don't need parenting, but they do. Yeah. And we don't want to be helicopter parents, but at the same point, it's our responsibility to know really where they're at. And if they're oh, logged yeah. up in the room all day, it's pretty tough to know. That's whether right. they, they, they need you. They, yeah. they need you whether they, they don't think they do, but and you know what, they, they do need you, so. But parenting, does, it, it just needs to evolve and grow with the child. It's, it's, yeah. it's different parenting a teen because they want to kind of um, try out their independence yeah. and, and show that they, you know, can handle their responsibilities themselves, but they still need guidance and they need right. someone to check in with them. Um, and, um, you know, role model, of course, too. I mean, if we're telling them, you need to get outside for a walk every day, are we doing that, you know? Um, and I think that it's just so important to um, have, have an understanding that they're, you know, they don't want to be nagged because they stop hearing that, sure. but they do want you they do want to know that you care yeah. and that you are checking in on them they yeah. want to know that you know that they're not just floating out there kind of just hanging out until further notice because of this pandemic especially right. during this right. time right um i think that that can um lead to teens becoming um sort of unmotivated maybe even depressed because one yeah days just flowing into the next without yeah. yeah without that type of um uh without a routine without yeah. someone checking to, in with about yeah. checking in yeah, so yeah I, I mean that, it, maybe in every week to have you know Monday at 11 let's have a 10 minute powwow on how you're doing so they know at least that time once a week someone's going to be saying how are you doing mm -hmm. yeah exactly Bad idea or sometimes well, ladies, thank you. That is so wonderful. I, honestly, I could talk to you both and I'm sure <laughs> parents listening, you know, it, it, I'm sure you'd be fine with them calling and saying, what do we do? It's so nice to hear that other parents are having these kind of struggles, you know, oh, recognizing oh. that there is a problem is the thing and then reaching out for help. And lastly, Jennifer, I want to go back. You said such a powerful thing is giving each other a break. 
<laughs> you know, I, we've had that at our house and I have three, I have one, we have one left in college and two have periodically come back because of COVID who are grown. And, you know, there are some times where we're, uh, and that's for a lot of normal COVID reasons. Um, so to give each other a break and maybe not take on things that you might normally do um, or revisit things at another time. Deb, you said that beautifully. You pick the wrong time and it's different of night and day versus mm -hmm. when someone's tired or maybe they've not done well in school or the parents overworked it with yeah. their job. So give each other a break. And, I, you know, I think that goes in our society, too. I mean, I remember when this first hit and I'm at Aldi and Honestly, there was almost a fight behind me in line that I had to help with. I mean, is it over toilet paper? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was it, it, it was nine fifteen in the morning. I thought we were going to have this, stuff. but I mean, people have lost jobs. They've got financial struggles. We've got food insecurities. There are serious issues out there. So when we're out in public, you never know what someone's just experienced due to COVID, let alone the crazy political environment. So sure. I, I think that goes not only with us as adults out in the world, but with our ourselves, be kind to ourselves, but be kind to our, our family and give people a break. Right. Because, Jen, did you have anything else you want to add to that? Well, I just, I did want to say that, um, we do need to recognize that during the best of times, we have trouble, you know, <laughs> managing ourselves and our own lives and <laughs> expectations. Yeah. But during this time, it's just so amplified, it's so yeah. much more intense. And I, um, I think it's important to recognize how much change and uncertainty we're facing. And then imagine what that's like for teens who's the routines for children as they're growing up are so important. And um, so if we can try to maintain some type of routine, very, very basic, no big expectations, not, you know, not a big thing that's hard to, um, hard to keep, uh, hard to keep up with day to day, but just something so that um, uh, we uh, as parents and teens can feel meaning and purpose in each day and recognize that the accumulative stress of um, mm. daily, you know, uncertainty and sort of not knowing what's happening next uh, okay. does create uh, a whole lot of stress. So being kind to each other and um, yeah, s s maintaining a focus on what's important and letting go of the rest. Yeah. Bravo, Jennifer. Bravo. Man, I need to play that every day. I, I, it's helped me today, too. Thanks, yeah. Jen. Woo. I like to be a little weight off my shoulders. <laughs> well, and that key word, accumulative stress. I mean, even though a lot of positives have happened, we've got the vaccines on the roll here, maybe in a few months, maybe by the end of spring, I think they're saying. You know, it's still the up and down of navigating that. So it is an accumulated stress. So Thank you for using, you have great terms and Deb, honestly, thank you. Uh, thank you both. And boy, Michigan City High School is doing a good job at trying to address these needs. But I know the needs are great. So we wish all of our listeners uh, the courage to reach out to you if needed, both parents and students. Is there anything else, ladies, you might want to add? Um, the only thing I do want to add is that um, because we can't have assemblies at school anymore, we are doing some virtual assemblies. Um, we're bringing in, um, yeah, it's kind of exciting. We're bringing in Matt Hart from um, reacttobullying.org. Um, so he's coming in and we're going to do a virtual one that way. And then we've got Hey Ugly um, yeah. from LaPorte. And they're going to be doing some virtual stuff because we're doing um, Wolfpack Hour, which is a lot of social emotional stuff that's been put into the curriculum because of everything that's going on. So we're excited that we are going to be able to provide some virtual assemblies for the students um, that will help with some of the other issues that are going on in their lives that maybe aren't related to COVID, but related to, you know, substance abuse, depression, bullying. Sure. And so, so yeah, we thought we weren't going to be able to do that this year, but we, we were creative and we're going to be doing yeah, those. Dad, that's wonderful. Now, let me ask, if there's a parent or a community person like myself, I'm thinking Doombrook's Healthy Families, families, if they wanted to access those um, presentations, would they be able to? 
Um, I think so. Oh, no. We're not at that point yet, but I think they were talking about making them YouTube videos. Um, oh, so we would be great. able to do that. So yeah, we will share those with the community yeah. once we get those done too. That is so fabulous. Oh, see, there's the silver lining of the COVID, yes. right? Thinking exactly. outside the box. <laughs> well, ladies, thank you ever so much. I wish you all the best. The sun's trying to peek out and uh, <laughs> you guys bring a lot of sunshine to all of your students and parents and, and I'm sure the whole school climate. So thank you for all you do all you've done all these years and um, thank you. <laughs>